Rick. It's so great to have you all here. It's so good. I'm starting to speak like an American already. <laughs> <laughs> Visiting us, so good to have you uh, here as well. If this is your first time, yeah. if you're here today, you're not a Christian, you're so welcome here. We're so happy you came, and we really hope you experience something of the love of God here today. Um, turn to your neighbor quickly, person sitting next to you, and tell them when was the last time you were filled with wonder? Filled with wonder. <laughs> Joel Houston from a band, uh, Hillsong United, that wrote this song. Um, and in an interview, he says this uh, about that song. I was watching the news, getting caught up in everything happening everywhere. The tragedy, the despair. despair. <laughs> and sometimes we can get caught up in it all. And there's my son running around just wanting to be Batman. <laughs> I was challenged and inspired at the same time. When did we lose the wonder? Right? Are we still filled with wonder? There's so many wonderful things in the world. Babies being born and beautiful scenery, trees, stunning trees, all how many different colors can we see out there? Oh, even old beautiful buildings, amazing people, precious people sitting right next to us today. There's so many wonderful things in the world. But the tragedy is that, that many of the things, the, the challenges, the, the wars, the difficulty, they, they, they encroach on us. They take over our emotions and our thoughts and our hearts and our minds, right? Like it's a little bit of a wilderness that we live in. I love what we were singing about, spirit break in. You know, the whole universe declares the glory of God. And, and in some ways, our world, our little planet has become a bit of a wilderness, but the wonder of God is breaking into this wilderness. We can, we can, we can see, we can find wonder in this crazy world that we live in when we look through the, through the eyes of Jesus, when we look at what Jesus gives us. He gives us faith, right? He gives us hope, He gives us joy, He gives us peace. We're going to read that a little bit today. This is one of my favorite accounts in the scripture. Um, makes for great Sunday school material. Okay, one, of the, one of the classics. Got that Sunday school vibe. 
uh, to it. But at the end of it, at the end of the account, it says that they were all amazed, saying we have never seen anything like this. This is God. This is the wonder of God. When God breaks into our lives, uh, when we make room for Him, when we even just look to Him instead of looking to the world and all the brokenness in the wilderness and in the wild of the world, the wonder of God fills our hearts. And we can say, wow, we've never seen anything like this. We can be amazed. And by the way, this is not just a story, a Bible story. This is not just a Sunday school story. But this is a real account of a real event that happened. You know, these accounts uh, in the scripture, the eyewitness accounts of the life of Jesus, is some of the most reliable literature that mankind has in its possession. This is not just some fairy tale. Okay, sometimes we hear people discredit that the odds can change over the years and all these things have happened to it. But if you do a little bit of research about the Bible, there is nothing like it. There is no historic document that has been as accurately reproduced Amen. Yeah. as the Bible. This is not just some story. This is a real account in history. And what God does here, or does here, He wants to do here. He yeah. does here as well. So if you have a Bible, please turn there to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, I'm just going to read the first 12 verses. It's also up on the screen here if you don't. Fantastic. Mark chapter 2, and when he, this is Jesus, Returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. Kind of feels a little bit like this space today. Okay, not too dissimilar from this room. He was preaching the word to them, and they came bringing to him a paralytic, someone that's paralyzed, can't, can't use uh, all their limbs, carried by four men. When they could um, not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they questioned him, and said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed. Say amazed. Amazed. And glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. They were filled with wonder. Here's the one point that I really want to make today. Jesus is the wonder in the wild. Jesus is the wonder in the wilderness. He brings such breakthrough in so many different ways in the difficulties and the challenges that we face. We see this so profoundly in this account. Can you imagine a small room, sweltering heat in the Middle Eastern environment, people crowding in close to Jesus, and there's some guys who wants to bring a paralyzed man to him. Like trying to squeeze through the people, but they can't get there. So they, they I don't know whose house it was, but they just get, they start breaking through the roof of the house to let him down in front of Jesus. Can you imagine that scenario? We're sitting here, someone is speaking, all of a sudden you're like, there's someone on the roof. And all of a sudden you see dust starting to fall down, they're breaking tiles out of the roof, and they lower a guy on a bed who can't walk in front of all their eyes. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, that already is like, whoa, this is amazing. In fact, Jesus says when he saw their faith, sometimes when we do some crazy things, that's an act of faith. You know, God says when we believe him, that's an act of faith. But Jesus does two amazing things. Number one, he forgives this man's sins, which is so profound because obviously what the man wants is to walk. That's what he thinks he wants. But Jesus 
First and foremost says to me, your sins are forgiven. And then the religious folk, they get all bent out of shape, like who is this guy that he can forgive sin? And it's important for us to understand that Jesus had authority for sin because he would be the one to conquer sin. Amen. He would be the one to ultimately die on a cross to pay the debt of sin of mankind, Amen. of you and I. Right? That's what the cross is about. And I just, I just want to say to us today that, that Christians aren't Christians because it's a cool religion or because there weren't any other options. Okay, Christians are, are Christians because of Christ. Amen. Because Jesus Christ paid the penalty for sin so that that which came between us and God, that which separated us from God, was paid for, was removed, was washed away, that there's no longer any any barrier between us and God. Like Suzanne prayed earlier, we can receive His love free and completely. And it's a bit of a mystery. How can God become Jesus, the Son of God, become man, take on the sin of the world and die, pay the penalty for, for the debt of sin so that you and I can be forgiven and know it's a mystery. But this is what God did. Maybe you're hearing this for the first time, but that's a profound truth. It, it gives Jesus the authority to forgive sin because He paid for the penalty of sin. And maybe today you just want to say, Jesus, I don't understand this, but will you help me understand this? Will you open my heart to that truth because I want to be forgiven? I want to receive your forgiveness. And then Jesus heals this guy as well, which is incredible. You know, Jesus still heals people today. I've experienced the, the healing of God in my own body. When I had a middle ear infection one night, I remember it to this day like it was yesterday. I couldn't sleep. It was so painful. And I was just praying, Lord, just remove this, heal this thing. And in an instant, it was gone. It's like in the middle of the night, I couldn't sleep. I'm like standing up in my room. I'm bouncing. I'm dancing. I'm just like, wow, God just healed me. He still does that today. Jesus is the wonder in the wild today. Still today, whatever, whether it's like a spiritual distance or whether it's a physical thing that we need, He can bring wonder into the wilderness in our lives. And I just wanted to say these two things to us quickly before I pray for us and we eat some pizza. Hallelujah. As Jesus is the wonder in my wild, in, in my wilderness, like He cares about me. He cares about the stuff in my life. This guy that they that they carried in on a mat, he was important. To, he interrupted his meeting for this guy. And Jesus does the same for us. You and I, we are of utter importance to Him. You know, I have a friend, a guy called Marchin. In fact, Marchin was the guy that first brought me to Wales. Yeah. The first time I ever came to Wales was with this Polish friend called Marcin. Marcin was homeless when he lived in Poland. Didn't have, a, didn't have a house, didn't have a home. In fact, he had become an enforcer for the drug dealers. Big guy, strong guy. Um, and if they needed someone to pay them back, they'd get Marcin on the job. And he'd run after people and he'd beat them up. I'm not even kidding. Okay. That was how he made some money to buy food and whatnot. Alcohol, <laughs> food and alcohol. Um, and one day people came up to him and said to him, uh, you know, God loves you. Jesus died for you. He gave him a Bible. And he took that Bible and he threw it at them and he walked away. But that night God encountered him. He was living, he said it was, it was like a, an abandoned room in some building. It was full of bottles. That's where he, he was in that room and God encountered him that night. Awesome. Changed his life forever. Moved to the United Kingdom. Actually, he met one of the girls that was doing the outreach, part of the outreach team that gave the Bible to him. He married that girl. <laughs> Good move. Good move. Good move. He, got, he got a couple of kids. They lived in Slough, where we used to live for 12 years. His son is just finishing university in Bristol. I mean, the wonder in this guy's wilderness is just incredible how Jesus turned around the wilderness of his life and filled it with wonder. Isn't that powerful? How many more stories could we tell of how Jesus is the wonder in my world and our world? Like, I've got my own story. I know you've got your own story. But the second thing is, 
Jesus also makes me the wonder in the world. He uses me to become the wonder in someone else's wilderness, right? To step into their lives, to be that woman that he ended up marrying, and to speak to him and say, hey, God loves you. And he uses us, and, and we've just seen so many incredible... We have a friend in now from Uganda. She had cancer, and, um, and she was close to dying. And she recovered and it was amazing. God protected her. And she, while she was in the hospital, she was thinking, what about my family, my friends in Uganda? Those that have cancer, how do they go through this? What facilities do they have? What care do they have? And so she went. As soon as she was well enough, she flew to Uganda. She flew to Kampala. Um, and she went to the hospitals and she saw, like, she saw people lying outside of the hospital because there are no hospital beds. Their children stay out of school to cook meals for them. Yeah. So they'll go into the clinic, they'll get radiotherapy, they'll get chemotherapy, all of that. They'll come out, just out there, just outside, lying there and recovering, and then the kids are cooking meals for them. It is heartbreaking. I've seen it with my own eyes. This woman is like, no way. Jesus, we've got to do something. Yeah. And she starts an organization, an NGO, called the Patient Relief Mission. Wow. And she opens a hostel for women, cancer patients. And she hosts them, she, she welcomes them, she feeds them, she takes them to and from the hospital. Wow. She starts telling them about Jesus. They do one-to-one -one discipleship with them. Wow. And it's just, like the thing is off the charts. Last we checked, they, they provided about 5,000 overnight stays wow. to women with cancer. Come on. This is... By the way, we ended up planting a church in that yeah. city because of the patient yeah. Every yeah. nation Kampala came out of that woman's yeah. pain on a bed in London receiving treatment for cancer. Wow. Because Amazing. Jesus makes us the wonder in the world. He makes you and I the wonder in the world. Isn't that so? Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So as we finish here today, um, I just want to ask us, you know, have, have we lost the wonder? Don't lose the wonder. Good. What Jesus is Great. doing is incredible in the world. What he's doing in Cardiff, what he's doing in Wales, what he's doing in the United States, what he's doing all over, it's, it's incredible. The church has never grown like it is growing right now. It's yeah. the fastest growing it's ever been. Even in our own movement, in every nation, we've almost planted a church in half the nations across the globe. Wow. Yeah. These aren't just little church meetings. These are churches that are changing the world. Housing the homeless and feeding people and doing all sorts of yeah. social, social justice kind of stuff. Changing the world for Jesus. Help us, Lord, to, to look for wonder in the wilderness, to find you in the wilderness. Let him bring wonder into your wild. You know, today we can just say, Jesus, here I am. Here's my wild, here's my wilderness. Will you fill it with wonder again? Will you bring hope yes. to me again? Will you bring joy and peace to me again? And will you use me to spread your wonder all around, wherever I go, like a, like a fragrance to spread your wonder yeah. in the wild? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and pray. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are with us, Holy Spirit. Father, just as we take a moment here to, to before we finish, we just want to take a moment to allow you to do some stuff in our hearts. Well, you know each and every one of us. You know we have seen lots of wonder. But there's also some wilderness, there's also some wild in our own lives. I just feel some of us, there's family, in, in, family in, in um, not distant, quite close family that's really struggling, that there's some serious wild, some serious wilderness going on. And I just feel the Spirit would say, I'm bringing wonder to those situations. I'm releasing wonder into those situations. I'm bringing wonder into the wild. I'm bringing life to it. I'm bringing breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus.
whatever situation it is, just just release that to him. Just just mention that to him. Bring it to him. Say, Lord, here, here it is. Here's my wilderness. Spirit break in, heaven break in. Thank you, God. We expect you to move. We expect you to do new things in our lives. Thank you that you bring wilderness, I mean wonder, into my wild, my wilderness, into each of us, God. We see our situations. And Father, we pray, use us to bring wonder around us. In our world, Lord, in this world. Use us. We surrender ourselves. We give ourselves to you, God. We lay ourselves at your feet again today. Use us today, Father, as we go. Tomorrow, the day after, Father, especially as this team is you, will you use us to bring wonder in the wild in Cardiff and in Wales, in Jesus' name. God, we know that we are just vessels, but your power inside of us makes anything and everything possible. With you, nothing is impossible. So we expect incredible things. We expect to be amazed, to say we have never seen anything like this. Bring your wonder, Jesus. We pray. In Jesus' name, if you agree, say amen. 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 Come on, let's give Jesus a hand.